But uh, basically, one thing that I first noticed, and you know, I'm sure Jason, you have thoughts too. But just to, the first thing that I noticed was uh, I'm seeing the word controller, and I'm seeing the word view, um, and I'm seeing a couple other words in here that make make me think that this is s implementing some sort of variation of uh, MVC, Model View Controller Pattern. Okay. So that's just kind of the the first thing that we notice here. Let me pull up my notes. And so, and that's fine. I mean, I, I've talked before about that. There's actually a pinned comment in the Discord about <laughs> people say, "Should I use MVC or how do I use MVC?" And there's a bit of a rant there about the implications of that statement. Um, I won't get into whether you should or shouldn't, and when you should or shouldn't. That's a whole different conversation. I will say though, by definition, model view controller is three concerns. Mm -hmm. It's literally split into a model, a view, and a controller. And something that was a bit of a red flag for me is if you scroll up to the top, you'll yes. see line five, six, seven mention model, the view, and the controller, which tells me this class knows about all three concerns, which kind of defeats the point of having yep. a triplicate of individual concerns. So depending on your version of MVC or MVVM or MVP or whichever other separation model, there's a different level of interaction between each. So in this example, uh, you should have if you're using model view controller, the controller should be taking the data and interacting with it in such a way that it talks to the view. The fact that there is three different, there's a class that understands all three layers means it is dealing with all three concerns, which is probably the wrong way to approach it. Um, this might be okay if it was a composer object of some kind that was sort of um, like a composition root, but as a game controller, it shouldn't be dealing with each individual concern. Yeah, that I mean that definitely popped out to you. You were the one who actually noticed this, uh, this uh, the using of these namespaces, and that's actually a really good point. And uh, seems like an interesting, like maybe like a rule of thumb, like when you're scrolling through a code, especially one that's a class like this that's fairly large, you can kind of pop up to the top and kind of maybe catch some code smells like that. That being said, I do appreciate the use of individual namespaces. Yes, always that, a good idea to use namespaces and separate your things out. Yeah. It just it just in a, in a case like this. Um, It'd be one thing if an individual controller talked to the view and the data, but this seems to be composing multiple <laughs> controllers and views, which means it's probably doing too much work knowing about all those different parts. Right, right. Yeah, that's a good point, though. The, you know, we mentioned this earlier that we saw code that we really liked and we skipped over it, but it's good to, you know, it's good to look at the things we like. And yeah, namespacing is great because it does allow you to organize your code and uh, define your boundaries better. And it actually kind of produces code smells like this. And when you start pulling in a lot of namespaces, you got to think to yourself, like, what am I doing here? Why am I pulling in so many uh, namespaces? Should this be should this be separated so much? Should I have some other class to handle all this? Um, so yeah, it's a good one. Speaking of namespaces, uh, personal thing I don't like. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Each to their own. I'm not going to say this is a particularly big deal. Um, and there are reasons for it based on the Rosling compiler. I don't want to go into stuff. But it's not technically necessary. And anytime you write a using statement, you are literally saying, this is a dependency this script has. And this code will function perfectly fine without that annotation and the the implicit header. That would be the used implicitly, which, uh, yeah, I don't, this might be um, a resharper thing. Because I, you know, writer's not going to care. Writer's going to know that this is a Unity function. So this might be something that came from... Uh, well, it's to avoid those warnings, right? Where it's like it's not being used, and you're going to get those messages to say this isn't being called anywhere. Yeah, uh, I understand why it's there. It's just I try to avoid having uh, dependencies where possible. So definitely. it's annoying, but you can change the rules in Writer or Resharper to basically ignore that. Mm -hmm. And it may seem like a bad idea to ignore an error, but when you're working with Unity, if that's the environment you're in, it's just a hazard of the job. I, I personally prefer to just have my code not warn me about that rather than actually have to annotate my code to mention that I'm using a particular editor or something like that or a different compiler. That said, we, we always say that, you know, if you're on a team and that team has particular uh, guidelines of how they want to work, you should always remain consistent. Oh, doing. Yeah. So I'm on my own team here, so I'm going to get rid of this <laughs> just because I, I don't know. I just want to, I want to see the code as, as I would see it. All right.